Mr. Kevin Takagi, or we like to fondly call him Takagi-san, from Fenria, one of Japan's largest application development uh, companies. Prior to that, uh, Takagi-san has been with Panasonic for more than a decade and a half, leading and playing a pivotal role in supply chain and business growth. So please give him a warm a round of applause, Mr. Takagi-san. Thank you, Tim. So, this one. Uh, hi, everyone. As, uh, I'm Kenji, oh, Kevin Takagi from Fendel. <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, why I'm Kevin, it's a long story, although <laughs> not the next time, though. Uh, so, uh, probably uh, many of you here haven't never heard of Fendel before, right? So, did you know anyone? Oh, thank you. I'm relieved to hear that. <laughs> so, Fendel. Uh, it's a software development company, mainly in Japan, and which uh, consult, design, and then develop the application of its own, and then uh, development for uh, customers. The name Fenlio is taken from the wolf in the Norse myth mythology, which means that single wolf uh, is strong, right? And then the pack of wolves are even stronger which you present the company's attitude as well. The single engineer, as an engineer, or each person has some capability uh, to do something. Uh, but uh, they are also even stronger through the teamwork. That's what uh, we are doing. So this is what I'm going to talk today. The first, let me explain, the, introduce some of the uh, business, what uh, we're doing right now. And then after that, what we can do together with uh, Atomatic Ava to bring the best result to the customer. And then finally, I'm going to give some uh, outlook in the future, how we're going to contribute to this industry. Uh, Fenlio uh, is based on the uh, tabbed browser called Slatenio, which was created by uh, Yasuyuki Kashiwagi, uh, the founder when he was a student of the university. And then, since this is uh, one of the first tabbed browser, and at that time targeted at the tech-savvy people, therefore, it's so customizable, and then they're very comfortable for them to use. That became the very hit, uh, big popular in Japan. And then, uh, since uh, Kashiwagi uh, was both designer and engineer, so the uh, usability uh, which is specific for the targeted user, and engineering technology to realize that vision is our basement and the core competence of our company. And then, uh, when uh, first uh, I, uh, iPhone was released in Japan, actually in 2008, it's not nine like in the United States. So uh, we have started the app development uh, for iOS, taking advantage of our core competence then, gradually, we have uh, expanded our uh, reach, uh, including Android, web application, and then cloud. And now we're doing the service design and then DX consulting as well. And uh, as a result, currently, we have developed over uh, 1,600 applications for uh, more than 400 companies. Then uh, I'm going to explain some of the applications uh, which we do for customers. The first, uh, Mura. Mura is the company uh, of the boiler, uh, uh, which making the boiler system. And then uh, they actually the, in the Japan they both uh, the first uh, biggest market share, especially for the uh, small ones through steam uh, boiler. And then also they are having a business globally, including United States. And this application is B2B, obviously. The, uh, actually, the uh, application which uh, provides a service to backup the 24-7 services, and then by connecting the customer's boiler, uh, customer's boiler and the maintenance site, and then the online center at the headquarters. And it also sends a, a monthly report to the customer, uh, including the uh, monthly evaporation, fuel uh, usage and efficiency, and so on. And then automatic, if something happened, 
at the customer's uh, equipment, automatic notification will send to the uh, customer's premises so that the field engineer can rush to the customer's site and then fix them if, and then change the parts if necessary. So uh, we joined this uh, application when they renew it. And then the challenge here was how to improve usability. Because the first application was introduced in 1989. Actually, it's quite old. So uh, over the decades, uh, they are added uh, many features. And then, because of that added features without uh, total uh, designing, it's not so easy to use. And when we had started the discussion with customer, many engineers uh, and then had a complaint about it, how to use it. So therefore, rather than just uh, starting the design to them, we have conducted the design approach, which HCD, which stands for Human Design uh, Center Design Approach. Uh, the process is as follows. The first, we had an interview with field engineers and other people which is using this. And then understanding, and to understand, uh, trying to understand the usage uh, status. Then, after that, we conducted a workshop with them. And then, uh, trying to identify the issues. Then, through that uh, aggregation of those data, and we analyze data, and then uh, identify what they want. After that, we have started uh, uh, making a, a POC, proof of concept. Then uh, evaluation, and then goes to the uh, field engineers, and then getting the feedback from them. Uh, we repeated this process again and again. Then finally, we start uh, making the uh, actual product. That's what we did. And also, uh, from the engineering standpoint, to realize that vision, uh, we used uh, uh, PWA, uh, Progressive Web Application. Uh, web application. Uh, the, actually, it's a, a web application, but using this technology, we can ca cache some data, and then so that uh, we can uh, make a faster display uh, transition or uh, the screen transition as well. And also uh, here, the Docker. Uh, we use the Docker container to minimize the difference between the uh, de development environment and the operational development, as well as cost. So this way, uh, we have created uh, uh, this application with Mira. And the current status, we are now planning to introduce AI uh, for this application for the further intelligence, especially for the industry field engineers portion. The second one is a bit different. As a, do you know ANA? <laughs> Thank you. So ANA is one of the major airlines in uh, Japan. And then the, this Mileage Club app is a, a gateway for their uh, members. And they also, uh, when, we re, uh, when they renew it, we also lead this project. And then uh, the actual, this, what this application does is uh, it's a mobile payment, uh, ticket uh, booking, and our ticket booking, and EC, and many. And they also, uh, what they want to achieve here is to create a world where you can live on miles. But before we joined this project, the, this application was just a mileage management application. So they wanted to create that world with this application, so again, we took the design approach, like what I explained before, and then analyzed the daily issues through research. And then what we found here is like this. Uh, first of all, they want to use uh, many people, including the dis uh, sub uh, elder people or some people who has a disability. So therefore, uh, we have introduced a text magnification and voice leading application so that everyone can use that. Also, as a second, uh, the, since they, are, they really want to uh, change the application to the daily use, we thought the uh, accidental encounter with our content is very important. Therefore, 
we are uh, in adding the many features, uh, many uh, news relevant to them uh, um, for the uh, appropriate uh, screen. And then uh, also ANA is an airline company, is uh, their brand image is uh, reliability and high quality through the uh, long uh, decades of the uh, experience. Uh, we are trying to create, review, uh, reflect that image by design. And uh, after that, uh, as an engineering approach, we use the super app uh, uh, to do this. Because uh, if you need uh, to do many uh, applications, normally you have to kick the application one by one. Rather than that, we, want, don't, uh, we don't want to create that situation we created with one application, which is SuperApp. With that, uh, we are trying to create a better circumstances for customer. As a result, is, uh, it's uh, less than uh, one year since we launched this application. The daily access user is more than double. So that's uh, what uh, we're doing. And the final one is, uh, it's a little bit different <laughs> one, but the Nintendo, so anyone knows Nintendo, obviously. <laughs> but uh, uh, Nintendo Switch, we are making the browser running on Nintendo Switch online. And then the Nintendo, as you know, they believe it's very important to bring their worldview to all the applications de they develop. So therefore, uh, with credibility and reliability, which we created in the past, uh, Nintendo chose us to uh, make this, develop this application. And not only just the application, but also uh, we are now making the data measurement application for them, since this, this is very critical for the future uh, growth for them. So, uh, as a result, it's a core competence of uh, Fendio, as I mentioned, it's in design and technology. And especially, the, as I mentioned earlier, we thoroughly uh, study the client's uh, business flow and uh, goals they want to achieve. And then uh, we develop the user-friendly uh, apps that uh, realize their goal. And the second one is uh, uh, after we uh, identify the goals of the customer, uh, we provide a comprehensive capability and the speed to develop up. We have to be very quick to meet their customer's goal and then time frame. That's our core competence. So, uh, with those core competence, what we can do uh, for the customer, especially working with uh, Adomatic, Ava. So I'm gonna show two use cases from now. The first one, this is uh, uh, some equipment manufacturer. As you see here, they are, uh, this is uh, equipment, and then when uh, something happened uh, to the, uh, their equipment, they, uh, the alarm is going to the call center, or alarm itself is going to uh, send to the field engineer directly. Once the field engineer got that message, uh, thousands of the engineers throughout Japan rushed to the customer's premises to fix the uh, uh, issues. And if necessary, they're gonna switch uh, the parts, spare parts. Then the issue here is uh, when they uh, arrive to the customer's site, they try to find a way using the manual but the manual itself is not the only one that they refer, they have to refer to. There are actually many. So therefore, they are bothered which one to pick. And then when they, if they manage to find a, a solution by checking the manual, but it looks okay at that timing. But days after, the alarm re it. Why? The, cause of the alarm is not from the multi, uh, single factor. It's coming from the multiple factor. And also, the manual, since as I mentioned, it's many, many manuals, uh, it's not updated, or uh, outdated, or even wrong. Therefore, 
uh, the some smart inexperienced engineer tried to change all of the possible spare parts, which is working correctly. That's not efficient at all. So uh, then, uh, what we can do for that? Uh, as a result, I mean the know-how, uh, the engine, experienced engineers, uh, what they do is uh, ask the call uh, call for their uh, export, and then ask for the advice, or they ask to go with them, and then the, to train the know-how to each engineer it takes time actually. So uh, the know-how remains in the hand of a uh, few experienced engineers. That's uh, their issues. So what we're doing for that? We're taking the three step. Uh, first, we're gonna build a knowledge base uh, and optimize with IVA, or AVA. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we take the interviews with uh, skilled engineers and also we scan the manual, and then many uh, engineers from the uh, idiomatic helps us a lot, thank you. <laughs> and then uh, we, based on that uh, uh, interviews, we use, uh, we create a lot of the SSMs. And then after making that SSMs, uh, we optimize the UI so that they can instantly search and retrieve the information. As you know, at the business uh, site, even if you get the right answer without the right timing or right user interface, it doesn't work at all. So that's uh, uh, what uh, we're doing together with Idomatic. Then second, they need a real-time uh, troubleshooting support. At the office, you can check with the word, but uh, when you are at the customer's premises, the customers is uh, sometimes irritated. <laughs> and then you have to calm them down, right? So in that case, you need a quick uh, response and then correctly. That's uh, uh, what uh, we are trying to create, uh, provide a guidance and the problem and, uh, for a problem and allow the engineers facing the field so that they can uh, check what need to do without checking the manual. The third one is uh, expert knowledge capture and transfer. So as I mentioned, is, uh, they still expert is limited. So we need to transfer those uh, knowledge base to the uh, inexperienced engineers as well. With that, they can pass on those knowledge to the next generation and also uh, to globally. So, the next one is second case. Uh, this is a food processing company. Uh, the, you see materials as an input, and then after several process, like a baking, and then the, uh, you're gonna get the final product after uh, packaging. And for this one, you can make the gigantic one, but the packaging, is somewhat you have to uh, separate based on the products, sometimes different. So in this case, if some part uh, wrapping machine failure, what's you gonna do? Uh, you have to reduce the input of the materials first. Then, uh, still the same sem finished product in the line you have to evacuate them to somewhere. That's a huge uh, productivity uh, loss, from, uh, loss from the productivity or yield perspective. So if the uh, breaking down time becomes longer, the sometimes same finished product must be disposed because it's food, right? So it's a huge loss, uh, not from the cost perspective, labor perspective, and also the big uh, burden to the em uh, environment of this earth. So uh, then, as a background, somehow in Japan factory, they have know-how to predict before it's 
uh, becoming failure. Because the, using the uh, operation time of the parts, okay, these parts run over 10,000 hours. Yeah, it's time to change it. Or the noisy, oh, there's something noisy, it's strange. You have to change that. They uh, have uh, like uh, decades of the experience and the know-how from the beginning. But when it comes to the US or Europe, uh, maybe less than 10 years, because here, a lot of workers quit easily. <laughs> the the t tendency is coming to Japan as well, but still, they have someone like uh, working the 30, 40 years for one company. So therefore, they have the culture to pass them on. But uh, when you see the global, it doesn't work. That what we have to do. So, as again, uh, know-how remains in Japan. That's now good. So what uh, we are trying to do with uh, Ava is, again, we're going to transfer their knowledge to Japan, uh, from Japan to other countries. Taking an interview, and then taking a manual, and then making uh, many SSMs with Ava. Then, even after that, they need a daily instruction. Because, uh, as I mentioned, in Japan, they are okay, okay, uh, the, they have the culture to pass them on. So without a specific daily instruction, they can do that. But the, here, you have to uh, make some instruction daily. Okay, today, it's almost, this part is almost uh, running out. So you have to change that in advance. This way, uh, we are trying to solve this issue. So, uh, as a summary, uh, what can be done in collaboration between Aidomatic and Fenlio? Uh, Aidomatic, as, uh, as I mentioned many times, Ava was SSA, including know-how of experienced engineers, manuals, and so on. And taking advantage of that, of that uh, know-how, uh, Fenlio knows the, the business flow, and then we know how and why, uh, when to provide those information to the uh, field engineers and others. So uh, this combination provides a total solution optimized for the specific customer's need and business flow. So futures outlook, the uh, know-how itself is something that is passed down from person to person through the OJT over years or sometimes decade. And therefore, in this industry's world, there are many hurdles to do that. The first one is difference of language. And then the uh, second one is uh, social restriction, restriction, such as decrease of uh, experienced engineer due to aging. Even Japan, many of uh, the engineers retire after 60 years old. It's not, a, it's not a normal, but still they are aging and then they are retiring. So, and the regional characteristic, such as uh, securing engineers and then uh, educating them takes time, longer. So to overcome the hurdle and then bring the best uh, result to the customer, uh, automatic key technologies covers all the important uh, dimensions of industry AI. And using that, uh, Fenlio is actually doing and very excited to work with uh, them. And then now I'm going to increase these kind of know-how transfer a lot uh, to contribute to this industry. That's what I'm thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Takagi-san, for a very insightful talk. We have time for maybe a uh, single question. Does anybody have a question? When you're doing the interviews with the engineers, uh, how long does it usually take to get that knowledge base built up in order to be able to load it into some of these models? Uh, depends on the size, but uh, currently for the minimum one, that takes a couple of months, 
I mean, for the, uh, through the interview process, and then the make the SSM, the uh, idiomatic guides make a SSM, and then we uh, review it several times. So as a result, as a starting point, it uh, takes uh, two, two to three months. But maybe depending on the size, it's gonna be uh, large. And is that done by the Fenrir team? Yeah, it's a, that's a, it's a, well, now we are collaborating. So both of the team is doing right now.